Today, in our manual of non-violent struggle, we talk about the power of humor and how it can change societies. We all love jokes, but what do jokes have to do with revolutions? You're about to find out. For centuries, social scientists have been linking revolution with conditions. They will say things like, you can't make a revolution if you don't have many educated people. People are living in villages. People are happy or well-paid. Conditions, conditions, conditions. Well, here is a new lesson to be learned. It's not about conditions, it's about emotions. Emotions are the driving force of people. Look at the faces of the traditional revolutionaries. Deadly serious. And they should be, since they're in the serious business of revolution. Or should they? The modern day revolutionaries don't agree. They sing, dance, whistle, smile and look like they're at carnival. So the question is, what is the real face of revolution? Serious or smiling? Let's get back to science once more. The studies show that if you're serious armed revolutionaries, your chances for success are about 26%. If you're ridiculous looking non-violent revolutionaries, your chances are twice as large. So it seems those laughing silly looking guys are not silly after all. Believe it or not, but humor is one of the most powerful weapons in the fight against authoritarianism. There are three main reasons for that. Firstly, humor melts fear, and dictators need fear in order to survive. Secondly, humor makes your movement look cool, and if your movement is cool, everyone wants to join, thus making it bigger and stronger. Third, humor and mockery can create a huge dilemma for your opponent. Now, this is an important point. A dilemma action is a powerful tool for every non-violent group. Through a non-violent civil action, you can create a damned if you do, damned if you don't dilemma for your opponent. If they react, they look stupid. If they don't, they will look weak, and other people will start mocking them as well. When faced with an act of brazen mockery, oppressive regimes have no good choices. Whatever they do, they lose. A good example of dilemma action comes from Russia. There, in Barnau, an anti-government protest featured dozens of toys standing out in the snow of a Siberian city with banners complaining about corruption and electoral malpractice. It was only toys, no humans allowed. The story came to the Kremlin and the authorities decided toys cannot hold protests because they're not citizens of Russia. They banned a protest by 100 Kinder Eggs, 100 Lego people, 20 model soldiers, 15 soft toys and 10 toy cars. Fascinating, isn't it? The grand lesson here is, dictators lack a sense of humor, and humor is more powerful even than the army. Laughtivism is there to help put the politicians back to their senses and empower common people. Humor effectively communicates a positive image of the non-violent struggle and can easily win the sympathy of the international community. Of course, just because laughter in non-violent struggle is fun, it doesn't mean that it is easy. On the contrary, laughtivism requires a constant stream of creativity to stay in the news, headlines and tweets, as well as to maintain the movement's momentum. Bear that in mind until our next episode, when we will talk about media. And keep on changing the world with a smile on your face.